Hey, look, I'm Sophie. Mm. Hey, look, I'm Paxton. If you two don't stop making fun of each other, something bad's gonna happen. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I'm Sophie, Snapchat, Starbucks. Hi, I'm Paxton. I work out to impress girls. That's it. Kerchoo! I feel different. Me too. Ah! Wait, am I you or are you me? You're me. But I thought you were me. Uh-oh. What should we do? We can't go to our normal classes. Let's go to each other's classrooms and hope for the best. Okay, class, let's start off with our warm-ups. Paxton, you go first. Uh, okay. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. Wow. All right, guys, let's start out with the leg press and then go to bench. Sophia, show us how it's done. So if y equals 24, what does x equal? Paxton? Uh. What was that? 15. Wait. Ha! I bet you two are regretting making fun of each other. No, not really. You have an A in choir now. Wait, really? Yeah. Well, I guess I was wrong. Oh man, there goes my A. Trojan TV. I'm Rachel. And I'm Elena. <laughs> it would be pretty cool to switch places like that. I know, it could cause some problems for sure. Well then we should probably get back to being ourselves and get into this week's news. Sounds good. Talent show tryouts are underway. Auditions continue in Mrs. Zabel's choir room during resource. Next Wednesday, February 22nd, will be vocal auditions. And all other acts will be next Friday, February 24th. If there is a snow day, makeup auditions will be held on February 28th. Please direct all questions to Mrs. Taglauer in room 805. The 8th grade into 9th grade orientation night is at Central High School on February 28th from 6.30 to 8.30 in the auditorium. And on March 3rd, the Central High School counselors are visiting science classes to go over the curriculum and help 8th graders register for classes. Don't forget that East is offering free after-school tutoring for math and reading. See your counselor for more details. Congratulations to our math counts for going to regionals and taking first overall. Five EMS mathletes are heading to the state competition on March 11th. Good luck, math counts. A few weeks ago, a, a few weeks ago, a group of Munson resident doctors came to East. Here are Sterling and Daniel with the story. Well, is it involving the growth plate? Is that just a growth plate or is that a fracture? The Munson resident program pairs up resident doctors with each of the different grades. We're family practice doctors, so we certainly care about people not just when they're in the hospital or when they're in our clinic, but kind of the decisions they're making and the knowledge that they have um, outside uh, of our clinic and outside the hospital. The biggest thing is that I think it gave a lot of our students a chance to see firsthand that this really is possible. When you're in eighth grade and you're 13 years old, the idea of spending um, you know, five more years of high school, uh, you've got seven or eight more, nine more years of college to become a medical doctor, that seems very, very overwhelming. And so a lot of kids assume that that's not something that they would be able to do. Um, we're just trying to kind of create a relationship with all of the students at your school so that we can talk to you more about um, health issues, um, daily life things that you can do to be healthier, diseases that you have questions about. I think right now we're planning to do it like every couple of months. Um, so we're coming back in April, but if, if it goes well and if we feel like we should come more frequently, frequently then we will. Our vision is that uh, as we become a more uh, consistent presence in the middle school and te your teachers and things know that we're there, they might be able to say, you know, gee, I'm, I'm giving this science presentation on, uh, you know, breathing or something. Can you guys come and talk to us a little bit about what lungs are and how they work and maybe some lung diseases or the health class would say gee we're going to talk about puberty or something can you come talk to us about that. Admin appreciates the opportunity to have mentors on hand for students. It's a win-win for both that our kids are getting a chance to work with the doctors and also the doctors are getting a chance to work with us.
This has been Daniel and Sterling reporting for Trojan TV. Thanks, guys. Washington, D.C. trip goers, you need to turn in your room assignments to Mrs. Mackey by the end of the day tomorrow. Parent-teacher conferences are Wednesday, March 8th from 4.30 to 7.30 in teacher classrooms. Girls basketball continues with games on Mondays and Wednesdays here at East. Come out and support the team or look for live coverage of games on our Trojan TV YouTube channel. 6th and 7th graders, if you haven't turned in your course request for next year, it is overdue. See Ms. Pod said ASAP to get it completed. For this week's Trojan TV profile, we take a look at 6th grader Anthony Bark and his struggle with diabetes. There are 1.25 million Americans currently living with type 1 diabetes, including over a million adults and over 200,000 youth under 20 years old. One of these youth is East Middle School student Anthony Bark, who was diagnosed in June of 2016. It's a thing where your pancreas stops producing insulin, and for like everyone who's non-diabetic, it works all the time. But mine stopped working recently, like last summer. I have to be extra careful about stuff. I can't eat and I can't eat. Can't have sugar like everyone else does all the time. It's just to the north though. Alps. Alps. Anthony's day differs greatly from other students. I get up, check my sugar before I go to school because I have to walk to the bus and we have to check it to make sure it's at a good range because if I didn't I could walk and fall and like my sugar could be low and nobody would notice. So then I come to school, eat my breakfast, do my insulin, drop my stuff off. I know when I'm too tired, I don't want to get super tired. So then I ask the teacher if I have a break and I have a break. I do like one to two breaks. Because our school lacks a nurse, office staff like Mrs. Kahn's become supervisors for diabetic students. Um, they come in and they test frequently throughout the day and we just monitor to make sure they're in a good target range, so they're not too high or too low, so that they can perform adequately for the day. A poor uh, glucose test would be uh, below range or high above range. And so if they're low, they would need some sugar to bring their numbers up, such as juice or uh, some sort of candy. And then if they're high, they'll need some insulin to correct their level and bring them back down. For eight months, Anthony has been living with his diabetes and accepting the reality of his condition. And I'm used to it. People say, like, they're normal. I feel like I'm extraordinary because I have to do certain things people don't have to do. This has been Matt and Aaron reporting for Trojan TV. Well, that concludes this episode of Trojan TV. You can follow Trojan TV and the DMC on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook by searching at East DMC. And don't forget to check out additional DMC and newspaper coverage on our website, The Link. Have a great week, Trojans. Bye! Bye.